Each year, the senior class is asked to choose one staff member to deliver the graduation speech. This year, the seniors chose Ray Maceman. <laughs> which is fitting since this will be his last graduation at Amy Beale. Just as the seniors will be off to great adventures next year, Ray will be taking his teaching talents to China. Please welcome a man who's been a pillar in the math department for years, a man whose own children graduated from Amy Beale, our dear friend and colleague, Ray Maceman. This is so hard, I can't see any of you. Hello, Amy Beale, class of 2019. Thank you for asking me to be your graduation speaker. When I was asked, no one told me that before I came up, I would get to see that gift. That was, I got a little weepy. Um, yeah, so now I'm a little, a little decomposed here. Um, got to look at my script. All right, thank you. It's an honor to be here because for, I think, um, my first year on the teaching staff was your ninth grade year. And I didn't know that many of you then, but half or more of you, your sophomore year, you were part of teaching me how to be a geometry teacher, because that was a pretty rough year, as you may remember. So way to go, whipping me into shape. Um, and uh, about a quarter of you were part of the inaugural Computer Science for All class here in Beale. Thank you for that pleasure. Um, many of you have called me school dad, which was an amazing honor. One of you even got to be my school dad one day in the face of an onslaught of ninth graders. Um, and some of you are in the elite group of those who call me Raymond. <laughs> um, and also, hello and thank you to uh, all the parents, the grandparents, the sisters, the brothers, the cousins, the aunts, the uncles, the friends, everyone here who's come out today to celebrate this day with all of you, the class of 2019. So um, now that I have you all here, I want to talk about unicycles. Um, I also want to share with you one piece of art I made because the art side of me has always been a, a backstory to be a math teacher. So I figured it was a good way to go out to leave this, have you have, you have this. So um, unicycles are interesting. To adjust this here, sorry. Um, I actually wanted to ride out here on a unicycle and have that be my graduation present to you. But it turns out that you can't start in late April learning how to ride a unicycle and be ready by the end of May. Um, so instead, um, I just have this picture of a unicycle with a llama on top. Um, but I'm not gonna talk about llamas, I'm just gonna talk about unicycles. Unicycles are interesting because if you try to stay still on one, it's gonna be okay, honey. It'll be over soon, don't worry. Um, if you try to stay still on one, you fall over. And maybe you can stay still for a moment, like this llama does here, but over you'll go with scrapes and bruises to follow. So to ride a unicycle, you need to actually ride. You need to move forward. You need to keep going, and you need to find your balance as you go. Moving too fast might cause problems, but that's not what you need to worry about right now. Right now, staying still is the danger. Today is about pausing to celebrate your accomplishments but then, you need to keep moving. <laughs> Not because we want to get rid of you, but because this adventure is now over. You finished high school. Pause to applause yourselves. Um, good job. I've watched at least some of you try to stop moving in the last four years, to stay where you were, where things felt safe, where you felt like you knew what you were doing, where you felt in control, where you didn't need to grow. But you got over it. All of you are here because you kept moving, you kept growing and changing, and because when you stopped and you fell, when you got bruised or embarrassed, you got back up on your unicycle or on your bicycle or your skateboard or your motorcycle or your automobile or your snowboard or your pony or your dragon or whatever vehicular metaphor you prefer, you got back on it and you kept going. You completed your exhibition, you served at your senior project, you finished your dual credit classes, even if you had to take extra ones. You recovered missing credits, you might have even done, redone an entire year. 
and you found a way to balance all the competing pressures and demands and obligations. And when you stopped and you fell, probably the people that are sitting here behind you and above you and around you, they helped you get back up again and helped you to keep going, to keep moving. And now, you're here. You're at the poised in the graceful moment at the top of the hill, savoring what you accomplished, basking in our admiration and our love for you. You can take a moment to breathe deep, smile, pat yourself on the back, high five each other, and then get going. You can't stay on this hill. There's too much ahead of you. You need to pedal, roll, drive, gallop, dance, careen, jump, fly, sail, ride, or maybe just calmly walk on to whatever comes next. You might know what you're doing next. Maybe you're not sure. Maybe you're moving far away. Maybe you're staying right here in New Mexico. The point is you need to keep moving and maybe losing your balance and falling over and moving some more. Please do not linger too long in this moment. And as you move, I want you to think about knowledge and about learning. We've tried to give you the habits of a scholar, and those habits should apply whether or not you are actually in school. They are truly habits for lifelong growth and learning. This is where you can put the next graph up. Thank you. <laughs> Consider this graph. This is how most people view knowing how to do stuff, how most people view knowledge. There are things you may know how to do. You can probably walk, you can talk, you can cook your favorite meal, you, meal, you can write a paper, you can drive a car, you can draw a picture, complete a college class, live on your own, lead and motivate people around you, save lives in a fire, save a nonprofit in a time of crisis, grow food, turn a beat up and battered car into a sparkling work of art, touch your head with your butt, build prosthetics, teach elementary students or teach middle school students, categorize rocks, educate voters, organize around an issue, care for animals, nurture small children, make someone feel welcome when they might feel excluded, create art, music, and poetry. There's things you know. And there may be things you don't know. You might not know how to fly an airplane. You might not know how to perform brain surgery or extract a tooth or rebuild an engine, speak a new language, live in another city or in another country, get along with people you don't like very much, build a computer network, make a more energy efficient building, feed the hungry, save a species from extinction, make the world better. You may not know how to do all those, but you know you don't know how to do them, at least not yet. You may plan to learn some of those things. Maybe you want to learn some of the things on the first list that other people know. But regardless, you believe you know what you know, and you know what you don't know, or at least what you don't know yet. Unfortunately, the first graph is wildly inaccurate. The reality is more like this. And I've made the big part smaller so that we can still see the other two parts. Really, it's even more lopsided. Um, you do not know how many things there are out there that you don't even know about. If you don't believe me, just think of yourself back in ninth grade and how much you've changed since then and what you didn't realize four years ago. But the good news is that big, giant, I called it a wedge in my notes, but it's not a wedge, it's most of the pie. And that's where the excitement is. The hero's journey, the outlines, details, and heart of your life's purpose, all the fun and adventure and growth and richness of existence on this planet. But it's also... Well, it doesn't look scary up there, but it's scary. It's the unknown. It's everything you don't know yet, literally. And fear can keep us from moving into it, even though staying put and avoiding your purpose can eventually lead to suffering, at least as often as not. So again, when you stop or stumble or lose your balance trying to navigate all the things you may not even know yet and all the things you want to know, when you fall over, you can get back on your metaphorical vehicle of your choice with the help from all those around you, and you can keep going. And as you keep going, if the vastness of that giant thought of everything you don't yet know is a little overwhelming, please consider this other pie chart. There's another piece to the pie of knowledge. It's arguably part of that last huge slice because part of what you do not know that you do not know is what you actually do know. 
You may have forgotten some of this. You may have taken it for granted. It may be something so natural for you to do that it never occurred to you that it is something special. It may be something you can't see, even though your friends and family see it all the time, which means friends and family. You have to remember, remind all these people of what they know how to do and what they're gifted and talented at. Um, and as your math teacher, because of the way math seems to work, I often saw you not know what you knew and be completely convinced that you knew next to nothing when confronted with a complicated problem. You may have thought you were stupid or you were no good at math or whatever, or math or whatever it was that seemed especially impossible that day or week or year. You forgot what you already knew and you may have thought of giving up. You may have thought your failure to grasp an entire complex, sophisticated concept all at once at the age of 14 or 15 or 16 or 17 meant that you were just dumb and didn't know anything at all. Um, rather than realizing that that was a moment when you got to connect the dots of what you did know and seize a little piece of that giant slice of what you didn't know you knew not, to grab some of that unknown and make it known. So please believe that you may be able to rise to the challenges that life delivers up to you. Please believe that you can figure things out, even when you're not sure how to proceed. And when you start to feel yourself falling over on your unicycle or your bicycle or your pony or your car or whatever it is you're riding, um, please don't panic. Take a deep breath, adjust course a bit, lean on those around you for support, and regain your balance. Thank you. I love you all. We all love you all. Now get up and go ride. <laughs>